<coughs> All right, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Scheffler Press Conference at CES 2019. My name is Thorsten Merman, and I'm heading the Global Communication Department of the Scheffler Group. Having said that, I would also like to welcome all our colleagues from all over the world who are following this live stream of our press conference via the web. I also have the pleasure today to welcome Mr. Scheffler, Mr. Scheffler, Chairman of the Supervisory Board of Scheffler AG, and Mr. Bruce Wombold, our CEO Americas. Glad you'll be here with us. Thank you very much. Our press conference today is split into three main parts and a Q&A session in the end. Professor Gutzma, our Deputy CEO and Chief Technology Officer, will start with a part one, which will guide you through the innovative and passionate world of Schaeffler's future technologies, and in addition, will provide you with a visionary insight of how the city of tomorrow might look like. Part two will be presented by Matthias Zink, our CEO of Automotive OEM division, who will introduce newest product solutions from our core areas of expertise for product solutions for the mobility of the city of tomorrow, and who will also express in more detail where you can already find our newest technologies in operation. For part three, I will hand over to the F1 champion and co-founder of TRE, Nico Rosberg, who will, for the first time, introduce TRE and the way he and his team is partnering with Scheffler. Nico is also the ambassador for our Schaeffer Mover. So following Nico's presentation, we will then go through the Q&A session. And once you raise a question, I would like to ask you to mention your name and the name of the media you represent. So Peter, I guess the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Thorsten. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome at Schaeffler at this year's CES. Within the last 120 years, Individual mobility was a key driver for our social and economical life. More than 1.3 billion vehicles, cars, or trucks are being used on our globe. Techno technological progress was huge. Safety, comfort, weight reduction, and as one of the most important issues, efficiency improvement had been major technology drivers for the car industry, but there had been improvements also in the infrastructure. And this is very important that in the future we look in both sides, that we look on the whole picture, on the whole ecosystem, not only on cars. But still major obstacles and hurdles have to overcome. So more and more decision makers in this industry around the automotive and infrastructure part uh, start to say that for the next future, for the upcoming years, this industry will face and require strong, stronger than ever changes than what happened so far. We meanwhile talk about the need for disruptive changes. What does Scheffler view on this? What are the obvious obstacles that we have to overcome. First question, very obvious, can mobility, individual mobility stay the way it is? And the answer is very clear, no. But it will have a future. And how can this look like? If you look on the current situation, on the current obstacles, you, we all know one of the issues that we have on our daily use and our daily experience is congestion. If you look on the big cities, not only in the US, if you look to Mexico, if you look to Chinese ones, even, even German ones, the average speed that people are experiencing is two kilometers per hour, five kilometers per hour. It's definitely less than 10 kilometers per hour. In the main times where they use their cars, their individual mobility. Can they stay? I don't think so. So we need to overcome this, we need to think about different ways than just upbuilding roads over roads. <clears throat> this won't help us anymore. Another big issue, emission in these urban areas. <clears throat> and emission does not only mean um, CO2, it's really emission like NOx, like dust, like uh, particles, like all these kind of things that we really have to seriously work on. 
I just say this is not the end of the combustion engine, but this is something that we really <coughs> have to uh, consider very carefully in the future. Space, limited space in the cities is a key issue. Parking space. The cars are being used, like I mentioned, one hour, two hours, and then they are at still stand in the parking garage for eight hours, and then they are used again. We need to find different concepts to work on that, and there are ideas how to overcome that. And as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not talking against individual mobility. People need individual mobility in their daily practice life, but this is vital, and really to continue in urban areas with individual mobility, we need to think about dramatic changes. And <coughs> how, what are these changes going to be influenced of? One of this is with all the digitized world, with all the digitized communication world, you know, the daily life of the people is connected. We are their, their mobile phones, we are computerized systems. They communicate not verbally, they communicate with their these devices. So the mobility of the future will be part of this communication. It will also help for safety and comfort reasons in the future. We really have to deal with that. Sharing economy is a key driver. People are sharing these cars in the future. They are sharing mobility. People want to use mobility, individual mobility, but they are not less, it may be the better word, interested in buying individual cars. So this is something that we have to take care about, and this is the key driver related to CO2 discussions that we have all over the world. So environmental awareness and political decision-making, economical decision-making, dri uh, mainly driven by environmental awareness, has never been so huge in our social and political life than what we have today. And this is what we have to take into account. And last but not least, we have a change in the structure of our society, twofold. In the established countries, economic countries like US, like Germany, we have an aging society. How to deal this with individual mobility? In the growing up countries like China, maybe like Africa in the future, we have a young, motivated, enthusiastic society. And they want to use this. They want to get the latest technology. <clears throat> and this is what we have to take care of. This is what we have to really focus on. What does this mean for Scheffler? And this is the first message. We as Scheffler expect that mobility in the future is mainly driven by changes in urban areas. And these changes get into a more complex world than what we have seen so far. Yes, we will see drugs. Yes, we will see cars. Yes, we definitely will see an increasing of e-mobility. But what we also will see is different modal devices, different modal awareness of mobility. So we will see autonomous driving cars, completely different than have just the cars of today driving autonomously. So we have to rethink the complete system of um, autonomous driving, and I will show you how Scheffler is thinking about this. The other area is with this model, yes, there will be uh, underground, there will be railway systems, there will be buses, but they are in intermodally linked to, inter uh, to, to uh, let's say, last mile kind of concept of cars, and the bicycle kind of uh, electric-driven bicycles, uh, they will really be reinvented. And these are two areas that I want to show you in our vision, where we, Scheffler, have brought to this CES uh, this year. One area is really a bike, a new bike approach of the future. And the idea is to really avoid the disadvantages of a bike, but still use the advantage of a bike to really run 
nearly emission-free. Human beings are not emission-free, so we have to take care of that. But uh, at the end, uh, it's less emission that we have as human beings, fortunately. So uh, there are disadvantages with riding a bike. It's weather protection, it's load carrying, it's yeah, some kind of sweating that you are uh, having there. So we thought about that and the real idea, and this is uh, the first time we show this here at CES, so it's a kind of world innovation that we brought here. This is the serious <coughs> version of our biohybrid. The biohybrid is a car that is based on an e-bike powertrain. This is a car that cannot fall down like a bicycle, but still can use bicycle lanes. In all of the major cities, they are building thousands of kilometers and miles for these kind of <coughs> bicycle uh, highways. This can be used there. So this is something that we have a modular approach about. This is uh, some kind of device that is connected into the world that I was describing. It's very eco-friendly and yeah, it's really a weather protection bicycle with four wheels. And we call it biohybrid. Why? It's a hybrid, it's electric drive, and one part of this is the human being, so it's a bio part. Uh, that's why we have chosen the name. So this is for transport of people, very obvious. But you see there are young people, they have great ideas and they work on these unique ideas, how to transport. So the other area is how can we bring goods in the future, your pizza, in the future to where the people are. And this is the pickup version of our biohybrid or the transport version. This is also new, this is also world innovation that we have brought to CES and that you will see on our booth. So it's a cargo version, human being, a personal uh, version that we are showing. It's a modular concept. And if you look on that, we are working on this idea for three years now. We established our own startup company to bring this into production. We will have a first lot of uh, pilot cars uh, middle of this year. And uh, we will start production quarter three, so middle of 2020. Why 20? 20, because we want to have high quality. This is something that is very clear and a very clear message com in combination with Scheffler. Quality, innovation, and uh, progress uh, for the future. This is what we can offer. The second thing I will talk about <coughs> is a very special idea of an autonomous driving robocab or mover car. The idea is to replace the kind of usage of taxis as of today, to really have a four-seater car that is completely autonomous driving. There's no steering wheel anymore in that car. The car is really handling very flexible, can turn on the spot, and uh, this is a completely new idea. You will see this on our booth as well. <laughs> so this is a key element for autonomous driving uh, in the future in cities, and if we talk about autonomous driving, we see several areas where autonomous driving will show up, and where Scheffler will deliver components, always with the competence of system knowledge in, in using this. So one area where we definitely will see autonomous driving of level three, four, five, is the truck business. So you see what kind of improvement within the next six, seven years we're going to see. Autonomous cars, that's very obvious. Complete auto industry uh, worldwide is working on those kind of solutions with solutions from Scheffler that we will support this idea of growing level of uh, autonomous driving in this more or less luxury segment cars of the future. Yeah, and this is already there. This is already there in the taxi fleet with those kind of what we call retrofit solutions. So autonomous driving as a kind of retrofit will be installed in cars of today and used in fleets, taxi fleets all over the world. So this is the third area where we're going to see that. But really think this system to the end 
This needs new approaches for cars. And this is the Scheffler idea of really replacing this retrofit solution by its own autonomous driving cap of the future, RoboCab. This car offers exactly the, the volume, the usage of a taxi as of today with, let's say, uh, nearly half of the footprint, nearly half of the space. Uh, and this car is fully flexible. And we see a big growth, and you see this on this chart, for robocabs within the upcoming 15 years. And this is what we are working on. So this is e-mobility, this is autonomous driving, this is connected driving. So the, this car is really featuring the future trends and changes and breakthrough uh, innovations of mobility in cities in the future. And there's more to come. This is not only for transport in the cities of the future autonomously of people, but also for any kind of mailing system, for any kind of a frozen system like here. There, there's a lot of ideas. So this is a flexible, standard structure, a rolling chassis, what we call, with flexible huts for people or goods transport uh, that we are developing in the future. Just an idea, a little movie, how this can be in the future. So you order this car, you see the car can move in any direction. We have 90 degree steering. The car can turn on the spot. You order this car with your mobile phone. The car is coming and pick you up, bring you to the office, bring you the children to school. So mo individual mobility service is done. The car is turning back to the next job. So all of these cars can really run. There is a transport version of these cars. So this is a, a mobile car. This is a pharmacy uh, version of the car. So this car brings you the pharmacy that you need directly to your house where you live. The car can enter logistic centers. So it's very, very flexible. So the big malls that you have, you deliver to the supermarkets uh, with these cars directly in the storage, uh, the goods that are ordered in, during night. You see the car can, is easily to handle with this 90 degree steering. <coughs> and this car is really sized that it can walk through streets, lanes of the future. And if necessary, this car is going to charging stations also fully automatic, completely connected and fully autonomous driving, electric driving as a potential in the future. So this is the logistical mover solution that we brought to CES this year. So what is happening? Yeah, you see, we expect really a lot of changes, but we are not afraid of changes. We see, cha we see the necessity of change as a big chance, a big change to restructure and where necessary to bring breakthrough solutions to the market. This challenge is really tough. We need to have the economical foundation to do that, and we have to have the great creativity of the people to really do that. And we are competing with our current customers. We are competing with OEs. We are competing with, uh, so the world will change. We are competing with our current competitors and we are competing with new lineups, new startups that are really in that field. So it's really a fierce competition. The solution in doing that can only work if we are really faster than ever in really creating these solutions. And one of the areas where we are partnering in this is the chassis. And there's this famous Nico Rosberg you know about. He and his dad, uh, they really own an engineering house which is very famous for chassis. And he will show that later. So this is one of our partners that we have established in our future. And we are very proud that Nico is uh, ambassador of this Scheffler mover of the future. And if we look on autonomous driving, there are four major areas. One is the electromechanical part of the steering. The other one is 
the uh, other system. These are the sensors to really control what is outside the car. The third area is the computer that is running the system. And last but not least, it has artificial intelligence software. So these four areas we have to find, and this can only do with partner. If we look on the mechatronical part of the steering, we are partnering with Paravan. Paravan is a company that is really working for 10 years now on the system uh, of um, handicapped cars without steering column. So they have a complete steel by wire, drive by wire system, which is the only one that has legal allowance all over the world. And we bought this company, we are working with them. So this is one key element for autonomous driving in the future and we will establish this in our mover. Because we, in the future for these autonomous cars, you really have to trust artificial intelligence and electronic and mechanical hardware and sensors. And this is what we have to establish and this is what we have to work on and we can only do this in partnerships. And we know it has to work all the time. This Paravan company has more than 1 billion kilometers used of cars already uh, without any failure. So this is a redundant system which is very important. They do this everywhere, all over the world, and this has to work in every situation. And what kind of technology we will really develop in more detail for this kind of vision that I was presented, Matthias will show to you now. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Peter, for your visionary look into the city of tomorrow. So you may have asked yourself already, what is, what is finally today's and tomorrow's Scheffler's product offering or, or value proposition? And I want to take you through that uh, in the next couple of minutes here. So first of all, already today, we are a technology partner to the automotive industry. Um, so it means we are very active and visible in the field of engine, chassis, and transmission. We many years are doing that now on a system competency level and on a vehicle level where we derive our product and modules and systems from. So this is where we are today in the, let me call it Peter, classical um, automotive world. But as you have heard from, from Peter Gutzma, this world of automotive uh, will change. It will change vehemently and it will change rapidly. If you just look into the center here, um, so as we talk about cars today, the car will uh, steadily turn into a kind of commodity. It will have to compete with a lot of different means of transportation, um, as you see that on the right side uh, in the years to come. So that's a completely new situation, at least for the car makers and as well for us as a supplier there. Um, the end customer will rather pay for data or for mileage than for a vehicle. Um, we as a supplier and as well the car makers will have to more and more partner and network with others. We can't do all on our own. So this is one of the reasons why we as well on Scheffler side are more partnering than we ever did. And yes, then there are some, some macro drivers um, like this uh, urbanization. So more and more people are going to residing in urban areas um, and in these mega cities, I guess the mobility has to change. We cannot continue the way um, this has, has been done so far. And there is a further, moreover, a further driver, and this is the e-mobility. With all these obligations to these uh, commitments being made on the, on the World Climate Conference in 2015, there will be a change to electric driving. And it has been us, about two years ago, um, establishing this 30-40-30 scenario where we foresee that about 30% of all the cars in 2030 will be purely electric and about 40% hybrid driven. That as well will be kind of game changer uh, for the mobility for tomorrow. So is it with the autonomous driving? As it was said, it's mainly as of now in the luxury cars, but with this new kind of mobility, we will see as well broader applications there, uh, opportunity to control the cars, to control the traffic, and to do new and different offerings than in the past. And we as Scheffler are working on both streams. The one is the e-mobility, and the other is here the autonomous driving. Let me start with the e-mobility. Um, 
I said it, we will have a high percentage of electric content in the cars in the years to come. Um, and we expect hybrids and electrics vehicles being in the market. And one of these offerings you could or you can see next week in the Nayas in Detroit. I cannot completely disclose it, but I can indicate it's a for a very prominent sports utility vehicle or a pickup truck here in the US. And there you're going to see a so-called hybrid module from Scheffler, which is a kind of merge between the present world of torque converters and, and drive lines with a e-motor. And with that, it's a hybrid offering um, to our end customers, which enables you to drive a car up to 50 kilometer electrically and to do power boosting and all that. On top, we have been launching end of last year with Audi in the Etron, which is well a very prominent vehicle. We have been launching the all-wheel drive transmission, so all the mechanic uh, transmission part with a very high power density, with a very high efficiency here for the Etron uh, coming to the market right now. In all these drive lines, we see a high content of uh, electric motors. So this is one of the main reasons, or the main reasons, why we said in Scheffler, we have to strengthen our product offerings for electromotors. And this led us to a merchant acquisition end of last year when we took over a special machine builder, the so-called Elmotech, which has a very innovative winding technology for electromotors. And with that, we are in the position to as well supply electromotors to the market. And this will take place from 2020 on. So there you will see the first Scheffler in-house produced electromotor in the e-mobility market. <coughs> Now, we don't do e-mobility for e-mobility purpose. We always question ourselves, is it the right point of time? Is it too early? Is it too late? What is the right decision? And that's really a difficult question. I guess if we take the whole ecosystem or the whole energy chain into account, um, we have to look into the energy generation. Is it hydrogen? Is it wind power? Is it uh, hydropower? We have the topic of energy storage. Is it battery? Is it fuel, synthetic fuel? or uh, hydrogen, or what is the energy consumption looking like? So we always take for our strategic decision making this whole ecosystem into account to fix and to define the right strategy and even more to conquer new business fields. And I guess one announcement being made as well late uh, 2018 was that we do a kind of cooperation or joint venture with um, um, a, a stationary battery um, company where Scheffler brings all the know-how for production in and uh, the other partner brings the know-how for the product. So that's something we're going to as well further strengthen in the midterm future. Now looking into the autonomous driving, um, one of the biggest concerns for sure the technology is very much evolving. So all the sensors and the leaders and the radars, everything very attractive as well for the end customer. On the other side, if we ask the end customer, and that is what it is about, what do you think about autonomous driving? Everyone says, wow, highly attractive, but I'm really concerned about the safety level. Can I really let go of the steering wheel and, and all that? Um, so we said for us, for our strategy, this is really of the essence to guarantee this uh, safety to the, to the end customer. And that safety starts as well with the actuation system with all the me mechatronics in the car, with all these uh, steer-by-wire systems. And that's exactly the rationale, and Peter indicated that that's exactly the rationale underneath this uh, Scheffler Paravan technology joint venture, why we took over this technology into Scheffler, because this is a well-proven technology. Yes, it's just for people or handicapped people's cars, but it has to be 100% reliable. And those systems are in the field since more than 10 years with more than 1 billion kilometers. They're really a, the connect between the steering wheel and the steering rod is uh, electrically. So this is proven technology. This is approved technology on the highest level. And this is in the market. This is now owned by Scheffler. And that's for us a very good basis and foundation for all these actuation and drive controls for these autonomous cars. And based on that, we feel ourselves in a position to enlarge our product portfolio. You see that here on that green circle with all these mechatronic actuators for the chassis system, including this rolling chassis technology and eventually ending up even on those uh, people mover 
um, vehicle technologies. Now, if we match now these ideas or these thoughts on the technology with this new business model, I guess you more or less easily see this rationale behind this new automotive uh, business setup and our product offering. So we feel with that well prepared for whatever will come on this vehicle level. For sure we support our clients as we ever did, um, but as well we make our own thoughts about the mobility for tomorrow, uh, ending in those ideas like this um, biohybrid or the people mover. Now digging a little bit deeper into this uh, people mover technology, we said as well, if we do that, if we enter that market, we don't want to do a me too approach. And we said, well, let's get started with a wheel. Where is the best place to fit the, the drive for a car? And I said, well, let's do it in the wheel. Let's start with an in-wheel motor or the Scheffler power wheel technology. So this car will have or would have the drive in the wheel to offer the optimum space um, for the passenger compartment and you have the, the driving element where it belongs to the powertrain belongs to the car in that, in that type of vehicles. And then we said, well, okay, if we build up such a car, let's think about the maneuverability. Let's do on the smallest space every kind of maneuver uh, possible. And Pisa no nicely showed that in his video. Um, and then we came to the idea with this corner module. And there we said as well, with that kind of technology, rotating the the wheel 90 degree, integrating the drive offers the best space um, um, and the best place for the drive and for the steering in this kind of corner module. And that was the point, and that was said as well, that, that uh, Nico's team with the TRE engineering supported us, and that's maybe one of the first proofs that we are more open than ever to partner here, not to do everything on our own as we rather did it in the past. Now. Let's get back to the vehicle level. I know we are a component supplier, we are a system supplier, and we want to stay like that. On the other side, we always have been one or two levels higher in our way of engineering, in our way of working, and we need more than ever our vehicle know-how. And I want to take you the next 30 seconds through a small movie, and it's at the end up to you to judge whether you see this kind of capabilities on our vehicle side or not. But let me give you a glimpse on what we are doing there. So that vehicle here is a very special one. Very special donuts, Nico, by the way. I guess you would love it. <laughs> um, that's a very special vehicle where we did put in four of our powertrains of our Formula E car, um, ending up with more than 1,000 PS. 1,200, so 1,000 kilowatt even. <laughs> um, and that car is a very powerful car. We did uh, even run a world record in backwards driving, by the way, even looking forward always. Um, so we combined all that. That's more than a playground for our engineers. That's really the, the system level where we learn about cars, about powertrain, about driving dynamics, about installing all these into the car, and finally even developing cars like uh, the biohybrid or the robot taxi. Once again, we have been very successful in what we did in the past in Formula E. We have been world champion 2017 with Lucas Di Grassi, and we have been team champion with Audi in 2018, um, and we're going to do everything needful, meaningful to keep that success going. And I guess there is no better point, Thorsten, to probably hand over to our next speaker. Thank you. Hello, hello. hello. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I think that's actually a very uh, important message as well to distribute around the world that e-mobility is fun yeah? and there's no compromise going to e-mobility in terms of driving pleasure. Um, this is a very, very important message to spread, I think, which was shown very well on that picture. Um, please allow me to make a quick introduction about myself uh, for those of you coming late and hello to everybody who's uh, tuned in from around the world, all the Scheffler employees and Scheffler Paravan employees, hello from, from Las Vegas. Uh, so until two years ago, I raced in Formula One and uh, I stopped uh, rather successfully as well and I stopped uh, 2016 and um, so mobility is really my home um, and now in mobility, it's such an incredible opportunity we have out there in the world yeah, to make a giant leap to make mobility more sustainable and we know that our planet and we, we need that um, so it's an unbelievable opportunity and I really want to play a role in that. Um, and this is why now I'm standing here today. 
uh, together with, uh, with Chefla because the opportunity came up for me uh, to take over uh, the co-ownership of uh, TRE Engineering, which is a company that my father initi initiated 20 years ago. And now I co-own the company to get together with IAV, which is a leading uh, engineering company in Germany as well. Um, yeah, and so, um, and that's why I'm very, very thankful that uh, for this partnership, because it's, it, it's so exciting. And I'm thankful on behalf of all of my team um, to be able to join forces with Chef La Paravan to create this uh, uh, incredible uh, Chef La Mouva and to really create the mobility of, the, of tomorrow yeah, and to be a part of it and to play an instrumental role. This is really what, uh, what we're all very, very proud of and, and this is why it's a pleasure for me to be here on stage in front of you all. Um, let me move on. Um, sorry, so I missed this. So just this was a, a quick, uh, quick view of uh, of me and my father, since uh, so there's a lot of heritage in the company, and my father was also Formula One world champion, and he started the company 20, uh, he initi initiated the company 20 years ago. Um, so there's a lot of racing DNA as well, because initially the company um, was actually doing engineering services for racing, and then slowly we migrated towards doing engineering services as well for for the road and for wider mobility now. Um, and then let me just go into a few details then. So we really provide services from A to Z um, in creating rolling chassis. And in this, this particular case with the, with the Chef La Mouva, it was quite a challenge as well. Um, but uh, proudly we can say that it was, uh, we, we came to a very successful conclusion in the end. And the challenges, for example, were um, in the design phase to make it extremely lightweight, to make a very, very compact packaging. Um, uh, t to make it safe, of course, that's a, a big, big challenge. And then afterwards in the simulation to make sure that it's functional um, and to, to integrate all the systems as well. So especially as you saw, uh, the whole power train is within the wheel, yeah, on each corner. Um, and so to integrate this into the whole concept was, was really quite a mission and, and we came to a really successful conclusion. So, uh, so this was really a pleasure to work together. And to end up then, I would like to give you maybe the opportunity to a few of you if you come and visit uh, the stand on the 8th, which is the Tuesday, so after tomorrow, um, a few of you might have the opportunity to join me in driving the Chef La Mover. Um, I warn you, it's going to be very, very fast, <laughs> so uh, please think about it twice. <laughs> but uh, I welcome you to join us there, uh, to come see it for your own eyes, and then uh, I'll give you uh, a few of you a drive, and that would be a, a great pleasure. So thank you very much for listening. As well, finally, it's a great honor to stand here with Mr. Scheffler in the room as well. Um, that's really a, a privilege. And um, that's it for me. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great CES this year. Nico, thank you very much for the explanation. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, as well. We'll come to the last point of the press conference today. So um, I'll start in the room. I have a couple of online questions already received. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, any questions to the gentleman here on stage? Yes, please, right there. Can you use a mic? There we go. I can hear myself now. Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, Transport Evolved. I have a question about your um, uh, your first section, talking about why people don't cycle. With the majority of online questionnaires into cycle mobility, the number one reason given for why people don't cycle is that there aren't enough bicycle lanes or infrastructure. The second reason is the cost of the bicycles, especially in poor households. Being hit by cars and being safe on the bicycle is in there too. So my question to you is, do you see your solution as being a last mile delivery corporate solution or do you see it as being a, an individual personal solution? And if so, how would you structure that so it's affordable for everyone. <clears throat> yeah, yep. no, thank you. It's, it's um, a very good question, and it's uh, really focusing on, on the real aspects. First of all, uh, you mentioned that we see that a lot of cities are really going to establish uh, bicycle lanes. Secondly, you're absolutely right. There are quite some reasons not to use bicycles. Third, Answer, yes, the majority of the first approaches that we see is really the cargo version. Because this is, uh, if the lanes are there, the inner cities, they will not allow in the next five years 
this will happen more and more in, in, in beginning, maybe in Paris, maybe in China, maybe somewhere else, uh, that the cars cannot be allowed to, even, even the transport cars for these kind of goods for delivery, uh, maybe pizza, maybe some others. And uh, with this kind of approach, you have no driver license and you can use special lanes, you can use normal lanes, uh, and you can go there. So the focus in the first run that we are establishing is really uh, this kind of commercial cargo version. Secondly, we are very, and, and, or fourthly, we are very, very strongly following how this is developing for individual uh, spaces. We see there is, just like in cars, there is a standard version, but there is a kind of high-end version. And normally these high-end versions create uh, a new segment. And uh, what we can see is that for public, for personal use, uh, people for e-bikes, they're gonna pay a hell of a money. And uh, so there could be offerings with this personal version that is in that same range. Uh, this is not the majority of the volume, but this will create this segment. And, and these are the steps that we are following. All right, we'll have a second question there, right? Sir? Um, thank you, Jim McGregor from Tyrius Research, also with Forbes and the EE Times. Um, you demonstrate in the video a basically wireless power mat charging technology. Are you developing that technology in-house? In are you partnering with anybody for that, that charging technology? <coughs> no. Peter, it's yours. This is yours, huh? Um, yeah, I, th I think this kind of charging uh, is something that a lot of companies are working on. And as I said, the future is so complex in all aspects, uh, even batteries, uh, we are definitely partnering. And how this will end up, we will be gonna see. In, in these areas, uh, I, I think it's too early to say that. So we are working with different potential partners at this stage, there was no final solution. So like, like I said, we are going for the next two years, or let's say one and a half year, and then we're gonna see what's go uh, going to happen. All right, any other questions in between? I have another one online. <coughs> Peter, I guess this one goes to you as well. Where does Scheffler see opportunities and risks for new business models in the future, e.g. e-mobility? Yeah, I think, um, uh, that's also a very good question and a, a very, very valid one. And everybody that is in this industry, whether you are OE or supplier or really key supplier, we have to think about. We at Scheffler talk about a two-lane strategy. We are very sure for a lot of years the conventional powertrain, conventional cars has a lot of potential. And this is where we really have one focus on and this is the basis where with the knowledge, with the business systems <coughs> that we have, we create, simply set the money to get into these disruptive solutions because they are very expensive. But nevertheless, we have to do this. And this is this two-lane strategy. Uh, we are working on new business models like um, the biohybrid by establishing um, our own startup, by creating this kind of approach. We don't, we don't know yet how this finally will end up, uh, the sales model, any, anything. So there's something new, and we are ready to invest a certain amount of our future uh, total investment in these kind of approaches. But the main focus is definitely to keep and to improve and to really qualify the standard <coughs> business uh, to create the financial basement for, for the future. What, what we definitely know, the future will come, and we definitely need to invest into this future and we need to find the right balance. And this is the big challenge for all of us and our, also for our company, uh, to balance this and to really look on trade-offs and, and obviously avoid late decisions. All right, Peter, thank you very much. Is there another question in the room? Otherwise, I would go on to an online one. Right there, first line, please. My name is Yuki Saito. Uh, I'm from IT Media Japan. So I have a question about level three. 
uh, does diversity became less important? Because in that slide, uh, level three, uh, percentage of level three mm. is not increasing. So uh, how do you think? You talk about the level three autonomous. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I would not say less less important. I guess it's all a matter of a matter of time. Um, how long a a clear level C structure will be in the market. Um, again, this uh, this this scenario ends up in 2035. So that's really looking to the stars. I I guess we cannot judge in detail on that scenario how long level three will be in place. Um, this will be a kind of evolving technology. Um, I guess level, level 3 is yet a challenge to apply, but possible without a, a big, big infrastructure. But it all depends how the, how the supporting technology, the network structure, the safety topics, even the ethical questions are, are being answered. So for me, that's not, not something to neglect. If you could read it as, as in these percentages, time will tell. Okay. <coughs> Gentlemen, I have another one for you. I guess, uh, Matthias, this goes to you. Where do you see Scheffler's strength in the field of e-mobility? As a free well, answer. <laughs> well, I, I, I see even our, our, our kind of legacy, I see as our strength. So there are some, some voices reporting, well, you guys are too much in combustion engine and, and all that. I, I'm always saying the contrary is the case because we, we all, all the previous decades, we we transformed ourselves from manual transmission to automatic transmission from former engines to modern engines. And now it's time to, to evolve via the hybrid to the e-mobility. Um, and we have some, some core strength, some DNA in the company where we say system engineering is one of our, our key enablers. You saw that we are up to the vehicle level. Uh, we have a very good understanding of this uh, whole ecosystem. Um, and we have a good not only good product technology, we have good process and production technology. And that's exactly what you saw. We didn't, even in that case, we didn't develop an own e-motor production. We did buy a special machine builder. So that's the way we, we, we set our strategy, how we complete ourselves to be, to be competitive in that field. So vehicle engineering, system engineering, um, and, and, and this ecosystem know-how, that's, I would say, that's our unique seller there, yeah. Okay. Or our differentiator. Thank you. Is there another question in the room? Otherwise, I would have a last question online here from a freelancer in um, Germany. He is asking, does Scheffler plan to manufacture complete vehicles like the mover in the future? Peter, I think this one goes to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a very valid question. Um, and... Um, if we talk about cars as of today, vehicles as of today, Scheffler will definitely not build. Makes no sense. Uh, we are partnering there, like Matthias said. What we have today within Scheffler, yes, we have the competence of engineering cars as prototypes. Like you have seen, this was this uh, 4E race car, or this transfer from race car into a super sports car. Uh, yes, we have that. We have this complete competence within Scheffler. So engineering of cars is there. Um, and we can use this, and we did use this, to create this completely new idea of the mover, of this driving uh, platform, of this fully integrated. I think this was the first time when chassis function and drivetrain function had been completely integrated and be used in this. So yes, we have this competence. And yes, there is an idea how to transfer this in the future. But uh, if you listened, I said this can only work in partners, in partnerships. And this is what the future will tell. Those kind of cars, those kind of movers, I'm very sure will be built. They will be built in combination, in relationships, in new kind of partnerships of different companies. It's too complicated to really adopt mechanical system, software, uh, artificial intelligence software, uh, and completely new uh, hardware uh, ECUs to really uh, have all the functionality in, 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 in one hand. So this is for partnering. And what I can imagine is that for this kind of combination of partnership of building a mover, Scheffler could play a key role, but not itself alone. 
Thank you very much. I think this was a good final question. If there is no further question, I would just like to thank you one more time for visiting us. Don't forget to come to our booth, maybe during the next couple of days. Do a tour with Nico on the Chef Remover. And, um, well, thanks for your visit. Don't forget that there will be a press conference tomorrow at 4 p.m. at our booth at the Schaeffler booth from the German Association of Automotive Industries. So uh, more than welcome to come and join. Thanks for your visit. I will close the press conference now. Thank you very much. Thank you.